everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel, Brooke Fay. If you are new to my channel, um, this page is about law, finance, and lifestyle. And today, this segment will be about finance. Um, and it will actually be more along the lines of personal finance, um, kind of regarding my journey and just things that I have learned along the way. So this video will specifically be seven tips that I wish I knew about money earlier. So let's get right into it. Okay, so the first thing that I wish I knew earlier about money, my dad gave me a lot of advice on this and I was lucky to have a good start, but I wish I knew more about building credit. Um, and not just building credit, really just the importance of credit. I will say that like for me, my dad did instill in me early on and got me a credit card at 18 and told me, hey, just put on your credit cards, your car insurance every month, and then a few years your credit will build up. And that's exactly what I did. So from 18 to 21, the only thing I put on my one credit card that I had was my car insurance and then I paid it off every month. And so by the time that I was 21, I had an amazing credit score. The only thing I wish I would have known more about that is just of course, what goes into a credit score? Like what are credit agencies looking at? Um, and so that's just one thing that I would just highly recommend. You know, I, there will definitely be another video that goes dives deeper into, you know, the specifics of credit and understanding how to build credit and how to improve on your credit score. But that's just something that I would definitely mention um, to anybody who's, you know, young, especially getting started. Um, get you a credit card, you know, just put one, you know, basic bill on there. And then just pay it off routinely every month to build your credit. So you won't have late payments. You're really not living off your credit card. You're just using it solely for purposes of building credit. The second thing that I, you know, would say I wish I knew more about, which I'm sure has been mentioned in my other videos, is negotiate. Oh my goodness, negotiate. I mentioned this in my video going into law school that I wish I knew the power of negotiating, but this doesn't just apply when it comes to getting financial aid and scholarships. This also applies to everything in life. Um, ever since I you know, was negotiating and I negotiated a full scholarship to my LLM program, I did the same when it came to my car. Um, even when it came to my apartment, I negotiated to get a lower rent payment. Um, I think, you know, a lot of times people are scared to ask because they see this fixed price and they think, oh, well, this is a, you know, take it or leave it kind of deal. I mean, you have to think a lot of these people at apartment complexes or dealerships, they are salesmen. Their job is to sell you that product. And for them to sell you that, you have to, they have to negotiate with you. They have to tell you why you would be better off getting that car or that apartment or that house or whatever it is you're purchasing. So let them do their job. Let them sell you that item. And when they do that, then you can start negotiating. Um, the number one thing my dad said walking into negotiation, the best negotiator is the one who's willing to walk away. So if you're willing to walk away from a deal, I guarantee you, you're probably gonna get the best out of that deal because the salesman is gonna be more willing to negotiate with you because you don't just need it. You know, It's more of a desire and not something you need. So again, in everything you do, negotiate, okay? <laughs> All right, the third tip I have, and something that I wish I would have known a little bit earlier, again, I, I kind of did this, but I, I didn't really stick with it, was budgeting. Um, so if you watched again, my law video, I kind of talked about when I made decisions on law schools, I, you know, made a budget for each of those law schools, how much it was going to cost. And I kind of did an overall assessment, um, in order to determine which law school I wanted to go to. Um, but when it came to my personal finances for a while, I, I really wasn't budgeting <laughs> to be honest with you, especially when I was in law school. Frankly, I was scared to look at my bank reconciliations accounts because I'm, I'm sure there was so much money that I wasted on just needless things, things I didn't need, going out to eat, buying clothes, whatever. I, it, was, it was just terrifying to see how much money I was wasting. But I think it's so important to do that. So you'll really say, wow, like I have so much more income that could be disposable or I could put towards other things. But if you never take out the time to look at those bank reconciliations and actually create a budget, once you review your your um, expenses, then it'll it'll be very hard to manage your money. Budgeting is a big part of managing. I know a lot of people say, "Oh, I don't want to budget. It's kind of like putting on myself on a permanent diet," but it's not. It's really just getting you in a routine of managing your money in a way that will benefit you for the future. Um, because when you budget, 
it helps you assess where you are and helps you reach those financial goals in a better way than if you just were just kind of willy nilly with it, you know. Um, and another thing going into budgeting, which will be my next number four tip is live within your means. This kind of goes along with budgeting. Um, really, I say live within your means, really live below your means. Living below your means means you know, you're making a $5,000 salary. You don't, a $5,000 a month salary, you don't have to get an apartment that's $3,000 a month or $2,000 a month. You know, you don't have to go out there and buy the most expensive car just because you can afford it. Um, living below your means helps you, one, reach the financial goals you're trying to reach at a faster rate. And two, you realize you don't really need half that stuff anyways. I mean, I can say for myself, you know, I'm, I am a victim to this <laughs> as well. Um, there have been plenty of times where I bought things based on my salary and I was like, oh, well, I can afford this, you know, before I went to law school or, you know, I deserve this. Like, um, but just because you, you know, can afford it or you think you deserve it doesn't necessarily mean you have to get it right now. Um, sometimes you have to, you know, delay that, um, gratification, you know, it's not always an instant gratification thing. You know, you you can reward yourself later, especially when you're better able to afford it. I know for me, like if you guys know me, I love Scandal. This is just random. I just, oh my gosh, I love Olivia Pope. I love Scandal. She's, it's my favorite show. And so for me, you know, as a freshman in college watching Scandal, I said, when I become a lawyer, I'm gonna buy me an Olivia Pope bag, which is a Prada bag. Like that's the main bag she carries on the show. And I was like, that's my goal. When I pass the bar, I'm gonna do that. And so you guys, when I got to passing the bar, I was like, okay, well, now let me go get this bag. But when it came time for me to purchase the bag, I was like, one, of course I still want it. I like it, but there were other things that I could do with my money. Like there were things I could do with, you know, coming, you know, paying off my car or, you know, investing more, doing things that I really wanted to do to reach those financial goals and living below my means instead of just going and purchasing this bag. So don't worry, one day, maybe I will get that bag. But today, you know, I have some financial goals that I want to reach. Number five, one thing that I would recommend to a lot of people, the money tips is get a roommate or stay at home, especially for those of you who are going to college or getting a higher, you know, degree if you if you have that luxury if you can afford to or you know have somebody who will allow you to stay at home for free or something like that then do it um rent is so expensive and again it's not an it's not like you're putting in equity in a home like you put that money out there and then it's gone forever um if you have you know somewhere where you can stay for free like i said your home or if you can get a roommate like for me i had a roommate up until I finished law school. I mean, I stayed in a dorm when I was in college and then I had an apartment, which I had roommates. And then when I was in law school, I stayed in a townhouse where I had three roommates. And one, not only did it cut back on the expense of my education and the loans I had to take out, especially for law school, but it also, I ended up meeting people and forming relationships that I probably wouldn't have formed otherwise if I didn't have, you know, these roommates. Um, some of those people end up, you know, becoming some of my closest friends. And I think, you know, doing that not only benefits you financially, but it also, you know, builds your network and your friendships. So why not? Number six, this is actually something new, um, especially, you know, that's growing right now, especially during the pandemic. Um, I wish I knew more about side hustles or just building passive income. Um, and the reason I, you know, say side hustles as well as passive income is for me, I have an accounting background and I wish when I was in law school, I would have built more on that. I could have done, I could have had more bookkeeping clients or I could have, you know, done side, gig, side gigs as a, you know, an accountant um, when I was in my second or third year or something like that to help cover some of those costs. Um, there's so many side hustles out there. Um, in addition, um, something that I especially want to mention when it comes to side hustles is the power of your brand. There's a lot of people out there, especially nowadays with the, with social media, who are getting sponsorships or different deals that you can use by simply building yourself up and building credibility. So that's another way that you can build a side hustle and some passive income. Um, so in addition, I'm you know I said passive income, and I'm sure a lot of you are thinking about those investments and stuff like that that you know you can do. And that's number seven, which I'm going to go ahead and mention is I wish I would have known a little bit more about investments or I wish I would have invested earlier. Um, so there's different types of investments out there. Um, and I'll make sure that I do a completely separate video talking about those because there's so many 
different opportunities and you really want to know what each of them mean. You can invest in mutual funds, um, hedge funds. Um, there's, you know, different industries like Forex or whatever, or real estate, REITs, just different things out there that you can invest in. Um, however, it is important that you're, you know, knowledgeable about those different types of investments and just kind of, you know, which one is most beneficial for you, depending on the type of investor you are. And I know some of those, you know, types of investments like hedge funds or even REITs are more limited. Um, and sometimes you kind of have to know people and build, again, that network in order to kind of get into those type of investment pools. Um, but again, we'll talk about that a little later um, in another video about investments. Before I, you know, stop, I, I do want to say part of number seven investment. I know I mentioned different funds and again about money, but the biggest investment out of all of this is you. I, I cannot say it enough. I wish I would have realized that earlier, you know. Again, money is not everything. The biggest investment is you. You are the brand. You are the asset. It is you. There's only one of you, only one of your life, and you have to value it as such. Um, so treat yourself like you would any expensive decision you make because it's all about you. Those are the seven money tips that I have. Um, if you guys have any questions or if you, you know, have questions about the templates I use for budgeting, I'll be sure to attach them at some point below um, in the comments. If you just have any further questions or if you wanna see more information about any of these topics I hit on, feel free to comment. And again, please like and subscribe down below. I'm on Instagram at underscore Brooke Fay, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye.